from Carissa's Creativity Space and I'm here to teach you how to make a cool project using dollar store pumpkins. All right, so this is how I made these pumpkins. I started with um, six of these carvable pumpkins from the dollar store uh, because I wanted to spell out the word thanks so t-h-a-n-k-s six of them and uh, anyway inexpensive in the fall decor section your dollar store should still have them and uh, if the dollar store doesn't have them I'm sure you know Michaels or another craft supply store so just pull out the tag and then the first thing that I did was I painted my pumpkin uh, white this is white paint from folk art and I am really lazy and prefer to paint out of the bottle whenever it is practical because I don't like to have to clean up and put it on a palette. So I am painting um, this white so that um, when the white pages are mod podged onto the pumpkin that the orange doesn't show through. Uh, because the pumpkin's a little bit curved, it may be kind of difficult to you know do like a second layer of Mod Podge and it's way easier to paint the pumpkin white than it is to go back and then re-Mod Podge the whole pumpkin to have that second layer. So um, anyway, step one, paint the pumpkin white. It won't take very long and it dries pretty quickly. You don't have to do a very thick coat, just enough to cut the orange down. And um, anyway, my pumpkins that I painted white, you can still see the orange through a little bit, but by the time you put the Mod Podge on, you know, you couldn't tell. Step one, um, paint the pumpkin white. And then once you have a white pumpkin, we're gonna Mod Podge page pieces onto it. So the Mod Podge that I have is satin finish Mod Podge. And I like to Mod Podge with a foam brush um, so that the brush strokes don't show. And sometimes I want them to show, but for this particular project, I don't. And I just have pages from a book that I don't, want anymore and um, tore them out and then I'm going to tear them into tiny pieces to mod podge them on. Uh, I'm using these tiny pieces because they overlap better and then they do like a cute change direction thing and because the pumpkin is curved and it goes in and out you'll want smaller pieces to help better follow the shape of the pumpkin. So uh, to do this I'm going to put a thin layer of mod podge on the pumpkin itself and then a thin layer of mod podge on the back of the paper before uh, sticking them together and then once I kind of press it down I'm going to re-mod podge over the top to get all the bubbles pressed out and help it stick really nicely uh, to my pumpkin and then I just keep doing this so um, you know dip paint you know make sure there's adequate mod podge on here and then overlap a little bit and I um, like to change direction with the pages a little bit. So it's not, you know, the type wasn't all one way. It was kind of crisscrossed and overlaid going back and forth. Um, you know, and I didn't use really squares. You know, I tried to mix up the shapes that I did. So some pieces were kind of triangular shaped. Some of them had nicer edges. Some of them were you know, kind of strips. And then I'm just, you know, mod podging this all the way around. And you can start to see what this is going to look like when the whole thing comes together. All right, so stick that down. So anyway, keep going. Mod podge your entire pumpkin all the way through the bottom, except for the top of the stem. The stem's the one part that I left mod podge. Okay. So when I was done with that, this is what it's going to look like when you keep mod podging the whole thing. And 
Um, you know, you can see the kind of the crisscross direction and how it turned out, and I really like it. I think it's cute. Um, to do the stem and then to also do the initial that's going to be on here, I um, first made kind of like an inky espresso color, so I mixed um, brown and then a little bit of black together in a palette. This is you know, if I have to mix paint, you know, I'll actually make a palette. So I got this palette and then I'm just going to paint um, around the top stem with kind of a small brush. And then go through and kind of trace the bottom here so it has a cleaner edge for what you want the finished. Perfect, so just like that. And then for the letters on the front, you can do these um, several different ways. You could paint them if you have you know, a silhouette or a cry cut, some kind of um, you know, cutting machine you could cut out a piece of vinyl that you could put on there. Um, what I do um, personally is I'm using a permanent marker and then I just pulled up a font that I liked on my computer and had it as a guide to start tracing. So, um, you know, for this first letter here, I started tracing, you know, the T and I decided to do all lowercase letters. So I'm just tracing um, with the Sharpie and you can start to see what this is going to look like. I started this with a pencil just so I could draw it for you. Uh, but I would finish drawing the T on here with the marker and I'll probably leave it that way if I feel like it needs a little oomph. I might go back over and trace it kind of with this espresso paint. But that's it and then you get six of these and then you can line them up on your mantle, intermix them with some real gourd, some fall leaves, and I'll show you some pictures of the finished product.